<sighs> yeah. It took me a minute to, you know. Let me turn my game on. It's basically gonna be me just chatting. You feel me? Nothing crazy. It took everything in me to, you know, just stop crying. So, this video isn't really gonna be about looking for attention, uh, you know, nothing like that. It, it's, how can I put it into words? It, like, this, this is not something I wrote down. It's like, this is like a situation happened. Like I said in my last video, I've been going through a lot. Dealing with, honestly, depression, my mental health, and all that. I've been dealing with a lot. You get what I'm saying? And I would sit up here and I'd walk around and be strong and show that I can do it no matter what in any situation. I will rise but it gets to the point where when do that person that's always strong finally get to just be happy and not have to be strong like I've been doing this shit since I was like I don't know like 13 probably 14 I had to grow up early no knock to my mom. She did the best that she could. Raising two sons. We didn't have our fathers. And we learned a lot from her. Through the good and bad. You get what I'm saying? But one thing I wish I would have learned more about growing up when it came down to dealing with a woman. Me, being raised by my mom and grandma, I always had the utmost respect for women. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, I had a tendency of picking the wrong ones. I had a lot of good ones. But it'd be times where I pick, I would pick the wrong one, and those would be the ones I would literally give my all to. Those wrong ones. So for a while now, I just been like I finally reached the point of happiness, like complete happiness. I'm gonna say maybe. Two years ago? Almost two years ago? Something like that. I think it was in late 2019. I finally reached the point of happiness. Everything started flowing. Everything started going good. I moved into my new place. Every, everything was just right. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I finally reached that point where... I worked so hard for growing up, a complete state of happiness, you know what I'm saying? But Lord knows that saying is true when, when they say misery loves company. I'm over here minding my business, doing what I gotta do. But let me tell you something. I'm a parent and I take deep Eat pride in being a father. Like, I became a father when I turned 21. Yeah, I was 21 when I became a father. That was a long time ago. I, I, I'm, I'm old. I'm old. And that changed my life. Every decision I made from that point on was for my kid. Everything. And me doing that blindly, I 
kind of made a, a good amount of bad choices. I stuck around with their mom, well, with her mom, because at that time it was just my daughter. So I stuck around for my daughter. Like the relationship wasn't going nowhere. We was living in a bad situation and we just was arguing. I'm not putting blame on her and I'm damn sure I'm not gonna take all the blame. You know what I'm saying? I take accountability for my actions. I, I always have. That's the type of person I would be. Uh, and that's the type of person I want my kids to be, to take accountability. And even though it was always, she played her part, I played my part, she would, she's never admitted or took accountability for any of her actions, man. Like, nothing. And I've grown to be okay with that. But the problem that I have, I stuck around with her because of my daughter, because it was just her at the time, like I said. And this is one of my bad decisions that I made because I love being around my kids. Me being there, me and her wasn't doing nothing. We wasn't, you know, I, I, I couldn't even stand her, if you, if you want me to be honest. I, couldn't stand her. Like, I made a lot of decisions so I could be around my daughter. I uprooted myself, left where I was comfortable at, so I could follow her to a whole nother state. Because she wanted to be up under her family and I couldn't leave my kid like that. So, Long story short, we was living with her family for a minute. Like, and once, you know, let me stop skipping parts. Before we moved to the new state, when she met me, I had everything going for myself. I was in school, I was working, like I had it going for myself. And then at that, in a few months, I was supposed to be going to the military with my little bro. So everything was set before I met her. But quickly she got pregnant and I'm like, damn. I'm like, all right, I really gotta go to the military. This this is right, this, it, it makes sense. And the first thing I her mouth is, oh, I don't wanna leave my family. I'm like, yo, you, you pregnant with my kid, bro. Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, we're a family now. Like, and I wanna be there for my kid. And I think the military is the best situation. With that being said, her response was simple. If you leave, I don't think I could wait for you. And me being young and just dumb, I just said, you know what? I gotta get out of not going to the military. And that's what I did. I got out of not going. And you wanna know what happened after that? I stopped going to school, I lost my job. Well, I won't even say I lost it, I got laid off. But same shit. You know what I'm saying? And even though she was pregnant, I will say she was still working. But I kept saying like, yo, hook me up with a job. Like nobody gotta know that we're together or nothing. And I was, I, I wanted to do overnight at her job. And she just refused. Like it was like a sin for me to work with her. And I'm like, okay. She trying to say, oh, we shouldn't work together because, you know, we're together, blah, blah, blah. Skipping down a couple months, we moved to the new state. I'm jobless, you know, living in a family's house. And I'm like, yo, my mom didn't raise me like this. Like, I got to do better. Like, I got a kid in this. Like, what the fuck? Like, this is not the way I envisioned my life, especially having a kid. So when she started working again, she ended up getting her brother a job. And I'm like, wait a minute, like you get him a job, but you couldn't give me a job. Like, like I've been looking, I've been filling out the apps and you just refuse to let me work with you. Like what the fuck is going on here? Long story short, I found out she was doing some crazy shit, but 
That's what Sansa point. That's what Sansa point. Like I said, me and her both play parts. I normally do stupid shit when I'm pushed. And because I didn't want to leave my kid, <coughs> I was pushed. I made immature decisions. I was young and dumb, like I, te- like I said. So moving on, me sticking around, she ended up getting pregnant again. I would never say I regret having my son, but I did not want to have a second kid with her. And I made it very clear to her. Me still being there, she called me one day when I was sleeping. Because whenever me and her did decide to actually do something, it was like once a month, once every other month, some shit like that, some crazy shit like that, your boy was wearing a fucking condom. And one day I was just so fucking tired. At this point I'm working, so it took me about a year to get back on my feet to start working again. And I ain't gonna hold you, I actually did enjoy not working because that year, I was with my daughter the whole time and I enjoyed every fucking moment of it. I enjoyed it. She was at my hip all the time. You feel me? So when I started working again, I told myself, I said, yo, I'm gonna make sure I bust my ass. I'm gonna work as much as I have to and still come home and be a father. And that's what I did. That's what I did, no no questions asked. And I didn't have to be told to do my job as a man, I just did it. And the relationship just kept getting worse. She kept picking petty ass arguments. I'm at work, I'm being text, five page messages arguing. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? I come home, same argument. And I'm just like, yo, I cannot live like this. So. My whole goal was to work my ass off so I could move. Or at least me and her could move together and maybe the relationship would get back better. So we was given the opportunity to move in with another one of our family members. I wasn't okay with it, but it's like he had his own space. It was like a, a house, but you know, it was section. It had like different apartments, you get what I'm saying? And he was offering it to us both for a cheap ass price. You feel me? It was cheap. It was like, it was cheap, yo. Like he was doing us a big favor, us having kids and all that. And I'm like, yo, let's jump on it. Like, let's make this shit happen. Like, all she kept saying, oh, what about babysitting? I'm like, bro, yeah, your aunt can watch the kids when we at work. I work overnight, you work during the day. It can, it, this can work. Like, let's do it. Instead of living in somebody's living room with two kids. Mind you, when she did what she did and took advantage of me, because I try not to tell that part too much because it's kind of embarrassing me being a man, getting taken advantage of in my sleep. But it is what it is. Yo, when, when it was done and over with, I told her, yo, I think you should get a plan B because I don't want to bring another kid in this situation. They don't deserve to see what our daughter saw, which is her parents arguing every fucking day over the dumbest shit. You not want to move. You want to stay stagnant. Like, I, I don't think it's fair to bring another kid in. And she refused to take the plan B. Like, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry, don't worry. I'm not going to get pregnant. And I'm like, Yo, I don't want to chance it. Weeks go by, she's pregnant. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, I did not want that to happen. And I made sure I did everything right to make it not happen. When you don't want to get a girl pregnant, you wear a fucking condom, right? So it's like, she made sure that she waited till I was asleep. So I don't believe in this. Never really did, but I suggested getting an abortion. And Lord knows I turned into the bad guy that day. That's me being a bad guy. And I'm and I even broke it down like why? 
I'm like, why would you want to bring a second kid? And we living in a fucking living room, my God. Like, you're not making sense. Make me understand why we should bring another kid in the world together. Like, we're not making it. And you just want to keep doing it. Time goes on, whatever. And, yo, we're arguing every day. She's telling her family, like, shit that I do to her. Mind you, I told her I was over and done with her. I was just only saying that for the kids, and I made that very clear to her. And I told her, I know if I move out, you're going to keep the kids away from me. And that's exactly what happened. Like, it got to, it, yo, it got so bad that she tried to put hands on me one day. And I, I'm like, yo, my nigga, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I never put hands on her. But I did put her, like, in an arm lock. Like, put her arm, like, up to her back like this. To like tell her, like yo what the fuck are you doing don't swing at me like I never put my hands on you as much grimy sneaky dirty shit you did to me I've never disrespected you because you are the mother of my kids and and this is what you gonna do my nigga like are you are you serious you gonna swing at me trying to belittle me as a man like what like what is wrong with you me still being there I stayed again for the kids. Time went on and the situation happened where she just went crazy. Like, she went out half on. It's fine. I really didn't care, but she kind of, to me, I just felt like what she did, she shouldn't have done because she's a mother. If you're going to be a thought, be a thought in private. You don't go to a public place where it's mad people and you thotting it up. I don't give a fuck what you do, but have enough respect as being a mother to not do it in public. So that night I'm at work by myself overnight and I'm, you know, working, doing my thing. And I see something on Facebook or whatever. It's like a picture or some shit like that. And she like, one of her friends tagged her and it was like, I'm looking like, yo, she went to a club like this. Like, bro, first off, you don't even got the body type. No offense to some women, but I always felt like, dress your size. You don't have to look good when the tightest dress or going out half ass naked. I don't give a fuck if you skinny, fat, in between, fat ass with a flat stomach. Yo, you 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 can look good while dressing appropriate. You don't have to dress like a hoe. Yo, I seen that picture, I said, what the fuck? Like, bro, you got no drawers on. What a dress. Like, bro, you ain't even got no ass in you. Like, what? So anyway, she did some body shit and tried to put the blame on me. And I'm looking like, whoa, bro, like, are you dead ass right now? Like, I didn't do shit to you. Like, that's not my fault. You wanted to go out there. You wanted to fuck. That's, you take accountability for your shit. Like, don't blame me for you wanting to fuck and suck in public. That, that, like, it blew mine. So, I get home, but like before I even walk in the house, she calls my phone because she she finally got home probably like four or five in the morning. And I'm like outside about to walk in. It's, it's like she timed me or some shit like that. And yo, she tells me, oh, before you come in, I just want to let you know. I told my father, I told your mom about the situation. I'm like, wait, what? Like. You told your father that you was out there being a thought? And then you told my mom? Like, bro, what? That's my job to tell my mom that you're being a thought. Like, like what the fuck? But her response was, like, she tried to justify her actions by saying, oh, it's because I did her dirty. I cheated on her. And I'm like, bro, technically I never cheated on you. Because if I say I'm done with you, I'm only sticking around for the kids and you choose to ignore what I'm saying and not take me serious, that's your fault. It's not mine. 
I told you what it was. I was man enough to tell you what it was. And you chose not to listen. So I come in the house. And I'm just like, yo, you didn't think about your kids when you was out there doing what you was doing in a club, guy? Like, you're a mom. Like, you can't just get a room. Like, you, ha you had money. Like, you could have went and got a room. And she wanted to be in my face. Like, I wasn't with it. One, we ain't on good terms. One, I don't want you. And two, you was just having another man thing in your mouth and you trying to kiss up on me. And I'm, I felt disrespected. I'm like, yo, what the, like, what is your problem? That was the day I almost smacked the shit out of her, truthfully speaking. But moving on, I think I ended up moving out probably like two weeks later because it's just like, enough was enough. Like, even if I wanted to give it another chance, it's just like, yo, this is what you really like. Yo, you really are whole. Like, wow. So, I'm doing what I'm doing, living my life, you know, working, you know, having a roommate. Ended up in another bad relationship. Yeah, I suck when it comes to picking them. But that one didn't really affect me too much. It did, but it, it, it didn't. But anyway, kid's mom was stalking this girl and all this other shit. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? Like, like how? Girl had a picture of her niece on her fucking profile page. And she hit me up like, oh, you got another kid. I'm like, wait, what? When the, like... One, I'm not that stupid to get another chick pregnant, especially not now. And I'm just looking, mind you, this is like, probably like a year after I moved out when this situation happened. And it's just like, yo, she was just stalking a girl. Like, and I'm just like, yo, bro, leave me alone. Like, yo, literally two weeks after I moved out, Cause I moved out, the situation happened. I moved out like a week or two. No, I'm gonna say like a week and a half after the situation. Yo, two, three weeks later, she was already fucking another nigga. So it's like, like, come on. So time goes on. I'm trying my best to co-parent with her. I'm doing what I gotta do. I get off work in the morning, picking up my daughter to take her to school. That's just like I was doing that shit every day. The only thing I struggle with is picking her up to take her home. Cause you know, I worked overnight. So like, it was kind of hard to do that. To like, if I couldn't stay up, I wasn't gonna be able to like pick her up from school. But I was doing that for years, like taking her to school as soon as I get off work. Like I was doing what I was supposed to do. like. When I left that household, I maintained my best to be a good father, even with me being limited to only seeing them on fucking Sundays, like actually chilling with them. And this is when the issue starts. It's like, why was I being limited? Well, I know why now, but back then I didn't know. I figured if I keep doing my job as a father, keep being there, keep supporting, keep doing everything I'm supposed to do, eventually I'll get them for the weekends. Nah, didn't happen. Didn't happen at all. Like, it, it just did not happen. Like, I begged her for years, like, can I get them for the weekends? And she had every excuse in the book. Oh, you gotta take me out so we can have a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not ready. and. It, I kept going through that same fucking motion. Oh, you can come over here, but how was I coming over there? It wasn't possible for me to come over there. At that point in time, I was working two jobs now. I had more free time. Think about it. I work overnight. When I get out of work, 
What you think the kids are doing? They're in school. By three o'clock, if I'm not working at my other job, I'm knocked the fuck out. I'm I'm dead to the world. Right? One day my daughter got me. You know, she was boohoo and crying and all this shit and begging me to stay home. Well, stay there with her. Like, spend the night, have a sleepover, whatever. And she got me. So I'm like, all right, whatever. I do it for my daughter. I love my daughter. I do anything for that little girl. And I slept on the couch. My daughter slept on the couch with me because, again, this chick still lives in the living room with her people. Like, but that's besides the point. So me and my daughter are sleeping on the couch because she wanted to be up under me. So this chick takes her out the bed. Well, takes her off the couch from laying up under me, put in her, like, in her bed area. And started giving me head. And I'm like, yo, my nigga, what the fuck? It was like probably like 3, 4 in the morning and I flipped the fuck out. I'm like, yo, I did not come here for this shit. I did not want that. I came here strictly for my daughter. She was crying her ass off and I came here for her. I'm here for her, not for you. Oh, it's okay. Nah, it's not okay. Don't fucking touch me. And I was so fucking loud that I woke, woke up the whole fucking house. I did not care. Because I did not want her touching me. And I flipped the fuck out. So after that situation, I said, I'm never doing that again. I never spent the night after that situation because I said, I refuse. I refuse. So, time goes on. Still doing what I got to do. Coming over every Sunday. Co-parenting not getting nowhere because every time I try to open up that door to co-parent, it's like her feelings. I didn't want to talk about her feelings. I only t- want to talk about my kids. That's it. Like, that's all I wanted to talk about. And it was always her trying to talk about getting back together. Like, or, or throwing her vagina at me. And it's like, bro, I, I, I'm over it. I just want to be a good father. That's it. And I was never allowed to be that. I was always limited. So time moves forward. And it's like 2020. This is 2020. Nobody really knew about COVID yet. Right? Nobody knew about really COVID yet. It was like news articles back in 2019 toward the end. But nobody was paying attention to it. I was reading up on it about this virus that was supposed to be coming or whatever. I was on it. So January comes. No, I'm lying. February. It was February because I have messages for this. And I hit her up and I'm like, yo, we've been doing this for years now, right? So when the fuck am I going to start getting my kids? If not every weekend, every other weekend. When is this going to happen? I got the run around. Oh, I need your other number. I need your address. I'm like, my nigga, you have my other number and you have my address. Stop playing dumb. You have my address because all the school, all the kids stuff, all the kids stuff, like as far as school go, my information was up there with the address. It, like, oh, you didn't technically give it to me, bro. I text you my address multiple times. What are you talking about? Bro, when when I first left, I asked you to help me with my taxes because that was my first time doing it. And I emailed you my, like, not email, I text you my address. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? You never had my address. You knew where I lived for years and you just not making sense right now. So, that was that. And... I was frustrated. I was pissed off. I'm like, yo, I've been jumping through fucking loopholes, trying to be nice, and I, I still can't just get weekends. Like, it, it, I just never understood why the fuck I couldn't get weekends. That's all I wanted was weekends. I could have easily talked to my manager about it and like, yo, bro, 
I want to have my kids, so I, I you know, I want to have them at least every other weekend. I know I probably can't get every constant weekend off, which was okay, but every other weekend would have been good. So I'm like, all right, you know what, fuck it. I'm like, yo, I'm going to just go to court and demand my rights because I, I got to have some rights here to be able to get my kids. There's no way you should be able to tell me no. And it's okay. Like, who the hell was calling me? So, and I said that to her on a Sunday. On a Sunday. Like, yeah, I should take you to court and demand my rights and get them every weekend in the court and say so, blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, that Monday, she f- putting in the paperwork for a fucking petition. That Friday, the bitch had the motherfuckers at my job to serve me. And I'm like, yo. So she was taking me to court basically for, she wanted full custody of the kids. And she wanted child support. And I'm just looking like, you're not about to take my fucking money and then take my kids away from me like, what? What? So, we had a court date set up. COVID hits. Everything shut down. Everything pushed on the back burner because of fucking COVID. So, time moves on. I ended up moving into my new place. August. During COVID, I moved into my new place. And everything was cool. Like, everything was cool. I I was happy. I'm like, I got a fresh start, new environment. I worked hard for this place, and everything's going good. And then next thing you know, I let her see the place. Because I'm like, all right, I want her to know, like, this is a safe environment. It's not like how my old place was. Because, you know, every place has its downfalls. You feel me? But over here, where I'm at now, it's just, it's nice. Like, you can walk down the street at 2, 3 in the morning and not have to worry. So, when she seen it, she was giving me some weird energy. She's like, oh, I'm proud of you, da 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 A couple days later, she's calling me. Well, she called me. I was at, I was at the park playing ball. And she called me about my daughter. And her behavior because she was having behavior issues all right so that was cool i talked we spoke about that everything was good everything was like good like we had a regular normal conversation about the kids and i was happy the very next day now i'm in the house and i'm playing 2k and she calls me i'm like oh shit what done happened now she started talking about my my daughter again her behavior issues next thing you know she, this bitch started talking about her vagina and i'm like what like bro i didn't ask for this like like i'm just yo my face i'm just like wait what i'm like how the fuck we go from a serious conversation about our daughter and you now we you talking about your shit She started talking about pH balance and all this other shit. And I'm just like, wait, what? Like, what are you talking about? Like, oh, it's so good down there. Da, da, da. Like, just selling her shit. And I'm like, bro. Like, I'm like, dude, I I don't care. You called about our daughter, right? Like, that's what I want to talk about. I don't don't want that. Next thing you know, because I don't want it, it's, oh, you don't know what a real woman is. I'm like, wait, what? Like, you're offering me your pussy. I mean, ooh. You offering me your JJ, and you that makes you a real woman? No, it doesn't. Like, what are you talking about? Oh, you scared of a real woman? I'm like, I'm just like, what the fuck is she talking about? I'm just so confused. The whole pH balance thing just had my mind blown, bro. And when she realized that didn't work, because I dead at that shit. I'm like, I don't want her. Like. She fell to realize, if I haven't touched you in years, what makes you think I'm going to touch you now? Like, let's just think about this. It's nothing about her I want. She don't cook. And when she did try to cook, she can't cook. 
She can't clean. She's very dirty. She don't bring a damn thing to the table other than sex. You can get good pussy anywhere with less of a headache. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, come on, man. Like, so 2021 comes this year and I'm hit with court case again. Everything is good with the custody battle. I got 50-50 friends, blah, 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 blah. Seeing my kids every other weekend, blah, 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 blah. Now, child support case. This shit, like, I don't, yo, the judge threw her a bone. And mind you, I don't mind taking care of my kids. I, I don't mind. But, like, I got news, like I said in my other video, I got news. Like, I was told how much I was going to be having to pay. I'm like, all right, I can eat that. It's, it's a lot of fucking money. It, I pay a lot of fucking money for child support. And then today, I just looked and the amount is just fucking outstanding. Like, that amount made me break down again. Because it's like, basically, I'm paying so much fucking money. She can use that money that I'm making, well, that I'm giving to her to go get her a whole nother fucking place. She can get her her own apartment. Mind you, she works. So she can use the money that I'm giving her to get her a, a fucking nice apartment. And it'll be just okay. And I'm just like... How the fuck am I supposed to provide for my own household when I'm literally giving her a household? My kids too, but literally she <laughs> is making money right now. Like, and mind you, I'm not rich. I'm like every other brother out there. I make decent money. Not great money to be supporting her. And I'm just... I broke down. I'm like... I had to stop myself. Like, I, I'm doing this video to vent. You get what I'm saying? And I, I just want other brothers... Because we the main ones that go through shit like this. I just want the other brothers... To learn from my mistakes. Be careful who you get pregnant. Because it will kill you in the long run. Man, you don't understand how hard it is. I'm, I'm like... I have to constantly remind myself that I'm a strong black man. And that no matter what, I will rise. But it be the days where I'm just like... How the fuck am I going to do this? Like, I'm, I'm, like, I feel like her, her slave. That's how much money I give her. I give her so much fucking money and child support that I can't, I could barely take care of my own household. And again, I ain't looking for pity. But I want y'all to understand. Y'all brothers and men that want to go out there and just think that love can raise a family because it can't. It can't. Don't think because you madly in love with a chick that that means outright get her pregnant. My advice to y'all, protect your seed at all costs. If you're going to have a kid, make sure that, that chick is worth it. Make sure she's not going to put you in no dilemma. Because nowadays, in this generation, it's not a lot of options out there. And I just want y'all to know that. I'm telling y'all this from a brother that's really going through it. I'm like the rest of y'all. I ain't no different than any of y'all. I'm a regular, normal guy. I ain't famous, I ain't making rich people money, I ain't doing none of that, you feel me? 
I'm a regular guy. Regular. And I just want y'all to know. I just really want y'all to know. Protect your mental. Protect your seed. Be mindful. And think with this head at all times. Think with this one, not the one down there. Because thinking with the one in your pants will really fuck you over. It will really hurt you in the long run. And like I said, I just want whoever to watch this, especially the men that do take the time out to watch this, please be careful. And please be smart about who you get pregnant. Because we got too many brothers, too many men going to jail for child support. You wanna know why a lot of them end up going to jail for that? It ain't because they not paying, it's because they struggle with the back child support. Trust me, I know. But see, I wasn't raised to quit a, as bad as I just wanna just give up. End it now and just be done with the situation and just finally be in actual peace. I wasn't raised to quit. And as I say that, it's, it's taking everything in me to not cry. But I want y'all to know. Hell, even the ones that made the same mistake as me, I want y'all to know. It's going to be okay. And I say that from the bottom of my heart. Just keep working hard, keep grinding, keep doing what you do, but I promise you, as long as you don't give up, it's gonna be okay. And this is coming from a brother that, that's just like you. And I just want y'all to know that. So for those of you that took the time out to listen to me event, I do appreciate it. Thank you. Your boy's out. Peace.